is time for us to begin. Welcome, everyone, to Bible class. We appreciate your attendance here. Um, before we uh, get started, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the many blessings of life that you give us. We're thankful for this opportunity that we can come together to study your word. We're so thankful for the word, your word that you have given us. We know that it provides life and, and godliness for those who are obedient to it. We're so thankful for your love, for sending your son to come and die on a cross. We pray that you will help us to always remember that great sacrifice and put Christ first in our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are studying, we are continuing our study with uh, questions God has posed to mankind. And uh, last week, uh, we uh, talked a little bit about the purpose of questions. We spoke of how questions are potent verbal tools designed to promote personal thought and deliberation. That is what a question is designed to do. And we looked a little bit about in scripture, uh, about how questions are used, uh, especially we talked a little bit last week about how Jesus himself used questions in teaching and instructing his disciples and the people that he taught. Um, we also uh, looked at Job uh, and how uh, those four chapters, starting in verse in chapter 38, going through 41, how God used questions uh, and, and posed those questions to Job to get him to, to contemplate his uh, omniscience and his omnipotence. Uh, and, uh, of course, we also talked about how uh, questions God has posed to man, they, they demand reflection personal scrutiny and contemplation. Um, we talked about how questions God has posed to man are arrows to the heart. They pierce the mind. They go straight to the core of the matter at hand. And so we, we talked about all this in order to set up what we are going to study for the remainder of this quarter. And that is questions that God has posed to the patriarchs. Um, we're going to look at, at some of these questions, and hopefully these questions will get us to, to think about what was the intent, what was the purpose of these questions that God posed to man. You know, there is a purpose for these questions. These questions did not just come about by circumstance. There is a reason that they are in the Word of God. They are in, there's a reason that we can go to these questions and, and look at them and contemplate them. Uh, and as we talked a little bit about these, these questions are helpful even to us today, that we can study these things and, and see what God intended when he posed those questions. So today what we want to do is, is we want to look at uh, the very first question that we see in the Bible that God posed to Adam. So if you would, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to look at the first question that God posed to Adam. Someone read uh, verse 9 there in chapter 3. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? Okay. So here we see the first question God poses to, to man and specifically poses to Adam. And he asked, where art thou? Where are you? Um, now, when did God ask this question of Adam? After they ate the fruit. Yeah, after they had sinned, right? Um, right after they had sinned, uh, God was uh, walking and, and calling for Adam and asking him, you know, where are you? Um, now, Initially, you might not think there's anything significant about this question. I mean, Adam and Eve had sinned, and, and God was just inquiring, 
you know, where are you? Because they had hid themselves from God. So initially you think, you know, there's nothing to this question. God's just wondering where they were because, you know, they were hiding. But do you think God really was asking this question because he didn't know where Adam was? No. We, we know the, the all-knowing God knew exactly where Adam and Eve were. So obviously this was not for the benefit of, of God's understanding of where Adam and Eve were hiding. Um, you know, I want you to think about how many times before God had possibly walked in the cool of the day. And in fact, if you read uh, the, the verse prior to um, the one Jason just read in verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord walk God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God against the, uh, amongst the trees of the garden. So we see here that, that God was walking in the cool of the day. And sometimes I think about that. How many times before had God possibly walked in the cool of the day and, and came to, to Adam and Eve? And how many times before did Adam and Eve you know, come to God when he was walking in the cool of the day and you know, talk with him? And, you know, we're not given a timeline between when creation happened up until the transgression of, of Adam and Eve. We don't know how long, but it quite possibly could have been weeks, months, could have been even years uh, before that transgression took place from Adam and Eve. And it wouldn't surprise me if God had been walking in this manner every day and spending time with, with Adam and Eve. Ned, you have a comment? Well, I just wonder, because it says he heard the voice of the Lord, you wonder, was he talking to the animals? I mean, because he, he may not have been talking to Adam and Eve because he didn't quite see them, and, but just wonder if they heard his voice if he was, you know, like you said, was this maybe a daily thing where he yeah. was his creation in the end? I don't know, but just wonder what, who he's, what his voice, who he's talking to. Well, what, you know, we, we see examples throughout Scripture how, you know, God desires us to, uh, you know, spend daily. Um, to, in Psalms, we read about how we are to, to spend time in God's Word, meditate on it day and night, you know. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if God was spending this time with the only two people on earth uh, that, was a, that were there at that time and getting them in, into that habit of, of seeing God and hearing him every day and walking with him. That, that wouldn't surprise me at all. But it's quite possible that this was a daily occurrence. What was unique about this day here when God asked, where are you? Obviously, they weren't around. They weren't there. They, they didn't meet God as he was walking in the cool of the day. And, and God poses this question. You know, this question wasn't for God to find out. Um, Adam needed to know why he was where he was. This question was for Adam. He need, Adam needed to know why he was where he was. And... Um, you know, throughout the history of mankind, when man has found themselves in, in opposition uh, of God, God is asking, where are you? Man needs to contemplate why they are where they are. And Adam needed to do this in this situation. You know, in the next week or so, we're going to be talking about Cain's situation. Um, Cain needed to know why he was where, um, where he was after he was angry and his countenance had fallen. Um, you know, did Cain realize why he was where he was or did he not take accountability of where he was? 
You know, who did Cain blame for his not providing the, the correct sacrifice to God? Did, did he look at his own, uh, his own self in that instance and, and realize that, hey, I, I should have done what God wanted me to do? No, he, he blamed his brother. At least from his actions, he blamed his brother because he, he killed his brother. Um, maybe he was jealous of his brother because his brother had did what God wanted to, and, and he did not. But Cain killed his brother, and he did not know why he was where he was. You know, I, I think when we think of this question, um, where are you that God asks of Adam? And, and where, where are we? God can ask that us of us individually. God can ask that of nations, you know. Where are you? And, and nations should be able to answer why they are where they are. Um, I think about the Israelites who were led out of Egypt by Moses, and they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. The Israelite nation needed to know why they were where they were in the wilderness for 40 years. What was the reason why they were in that situation. Um, and we can think about not only uh, individuals and nations, but leaders, kings. Uh, think about, you know, King Saul uh, and the fact that, you know, he transgressed against God's command. He offered a sacrifice that he wasn't authorized. He needed to know why he was rejected uh, of being the king of Israel. He needed to know why he was where he was. Um, and then a little bit later, when, when God had told King Saul to, to kill the Amalekites, you know, destroy all of them, but Saul didn't obey, and he kept back some of the flock, and he kept the king alive. And, you know, Nathan comes to him and and asked him, did he obey God's voice? He said, yeah, I obeyed it. And, and Nathan asked, why do I hear the, the bleeding of sheep and the lowing of, of these animals? You know, his excuse was what? What was Saul's excuse in that instance? Make sacrifice. Yeah, I, I kept these so I can make sacrifice. And what, what did Nathan reply to him? Yeah, it's better to obey than to offer sacrifice. You know, Saul needed to know wh why he was where he was, because he was not obeying the commandment of God. And, um, you know, Moses had uh, told the people, uh, the nation Israel, in Leviticus chapter 26, he said, If you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, speaking on behalf of God. He said, I will bring plagues upon you according to your sins. And then a little later in that chapter, he said, I will send pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. You know, if, if his people, if God's people, were not willing to, to do those things that God commanded, then, then God was going to... Give them, uh, have them call in account to what they were uh, doing there. And so this question of knowing why we are where we are is very important for us even today. You know, as, God, as God's people, uh, we need to know why we are where we are. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying that anything that bad that happens to us we can automatically attribute that as we have sinned against God. You know, I'm not saying that. But sometimes the things that we do, do lead us astray from God. And God is not going to bless us uh, when we are not doing what he has commanded us. You know, whether it is kings, whether, whether it's individuals, whether it's nations, 
all men need to contemplate where are you and do you know why you are where you are and that is the question that God is posing to Adam in this situation uh, getting Adam to think about why you are hiding from me what is the reason for that and and of course we see uh, Adam come to God and he answers you know where he was now did did Adam answer correctly in that situation what he do yeah well he, he blamed Eve he, he probably even blamed God uh, from that uh, because he said the woman that thou gavest me you know gave me of the tree and I did eat you know not only did he blame Eve he blamed God for giving him Eve who made him sin you know Adam did not handle that situation correctly he did not take accountability as he sh should but go throughout the history of mankind and often we see when man has sinned and transgressed against God's command he doesn't take accountability as he should and that is what God is wanting Adam to do and that's the lesson God is teaching for all of mankind to do hereafter and we need to think about that any comments that's a good point we're going to talk a little bit more about that you know with with Eve um, and again Eve followed what Adam did right you know Adam blamed God and blamed Eve Eve went and, and blamed the serpent you know she just followed suit right after what Adam did but yeah taking accountability uh, of one's actions is, is something that man seems to have trouble with and, and has had trouble with for throughout the ages um, but God expects us uh, to take ownership to take accountability of the things that we have done you know Adam couldn't hide this thing from God um, you know although he tried to hide amongst the trees as, as we read there in Genesis 3 uh, he wasn't going to be able to hide this thing from God and you know Adam no longer was walking with God he wasn't there with God as God was walking in the cool of the day and, and I think a lot about you know how the fact that sin had caused Adam and Eve to to go away from God to stay away from God to hide themselves from God but aren't we the same way when sin enters our life and and you know maybe we're we're not repenting of that sin and uh, we're struggling with that does that cause us to grow closer to God does that draw us near to God to walk with him or do we find ourselves, you know hiding from God you know it's it's those moments that if we can just ask ourselves, where are we and why are we where we are what is the reason um, maybe that will help us in those situations you know sin separates us from God in Isaiah 59 2 it says but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you sin keeps us away apart from God uh, and when we understand that when we come to that realization um, it is at that time that we need to repent of those things and, and come to God 
you know, we cannot hide our sin from God today. You know, he's, he's going to know. And, and we're going to be accountable for that. Sometimes we're going to have to pay the consequences of those sins that, that we do in this life. But know this, that even if we don't have consequences to those sins in this life, know that God knows those things. And be sure, and I like what Numbers 32, 23 says, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Your sin is going to find you out, whether, you know, maybe it's not in this life, but in the next life, you know, God will uh, reveal all secrets. Um, we know that, that all things will uh, be uh, made open, made public um, at the judgment day. But I also want to think about another thing about this question that we see that God poses. Is there, is there anything, is there any other conclusions that we can draw from where art thou that God poses to Adam? Think about the fact that who sinned first or, or who transgressed first? It was Eve, right? Eve first took of the fruit and then she gave to Adam and, and he also uh, transgressed against God's law and, and ate of the fruit. So does God know this? Does, does God know that they both have, have sinned against his command? And does he know that it was Eve that first sinned and then Adam? But does God say, Eve, where are you? Or does he say, Adam and Eve, where are you? No, he specifically calls Adam. Uh, in fact, I'll read it again there. Um, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Now, why do you suppose that, that God chose Adam uh, to call him out in this instance? You think there's any significance to that? Or do you think it's just the way it worked? Okay. Uh, Adam was the first one created, wasn't he? In fact, it, we read in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13 where it talks about that a woman is not to usurp authority over a man. And the reason given was because Adam was created first. And so... Um, when you think about this question that, that God poses to Adam, he is going to the one who he created first. He is the one that, that God has chosen to, to be a leader. Um, you think of you know, the men of households, elders of a congregation, deacons. These are positions of leadership where God has uh, design this for the man and the man has to be accountable for actions and God first goes to Adam and questions him where are you and of course getting him to you know confess or to explain why he was in this situation you know sin is a, a transgression uh, from the spiritual thing that God wants us to do, which is to obey him. And Adam transgressed against God's command. And so God was calling him to account for why he and his family has, has done this. Now, again, you know, we know that all of us are going to be accountable for our own sins on the day of judgment. Uh, a wife cannot say, you know, on the day of judgment, well, my husband did this, so, you know, I, I did this as well. Each of us are going to be accountable for our own actions in the day of judgment. But there is a, an expected uh, leadership quality that God expects uh, of men. And I think that is one of the reasons why we see God saying this to Adam first. Where are you? Um, and asking Adam to 
explain why his family, why him and Eve were in this situation. Any comments about that? And obviously, you know, they both disobeyed, whether Eve heard directly from God or um, whether Eve heard Adam say that God said, do not eat. um, She knew that this was against God's command. And, And we know, you know, when we study God's word, God expects man to deliver that to other people. Um, and, you know, we have, we are accountable. And, and just like, you know, in, in scripture, that we see that, that people are accountable uh, for one another. You know, we as brothers and sisters are accountable for one another. Uh, we are to encourage one another and help one another. Um, elders are accountable for the flock. Uh, they have to give an account. Uh, for the things that they do. Uh, God expects man to be accountable for other people. Uh, not in the sense of, you know, they, that they have to, uh, they can pass off their blame to someone uh, for sin, but we are to be accountable one to another. Benita, did you have a comment? said that the husbands are the head of the family and, and they are accountable for that yeah good Any, anybody else yes saying that sometimes we don't go to God because we think we can do it. You know, we can fix it. and We don't need God's help. Um, and, of course, we know that, that God asks us, you know, to, to go to him when we sin. Uh, in fact, in, in 1 John, it, it talks about if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You know, we, we shouldn't have that fear of going to God and, and asking him not only for forgiveness, but also for endurance, for, for help uh, when, when we struggle. You know, God's always going to uh, make a way for us to escape, uh, as 1 Corinthians 10, 13 talks about. Uh, there's always going to be that possibility where we can get away from that sin, you know, flee from that situation. God's going to make that possible. But sometimes we got to look for those opportunities. You know, we can't just, you know, think, well, uh, there's no way out. Or, you know, we got to be looking for those opportunities to escape from those sins and difficulties. Good comments. Anybody else? Well, this wasn't the only question that God posed to Adam. Uh, God asked two other questions of Adam. Uh, starting uh, in in the same chapter there, but in in verse 11. Look at verse 11. 
Someone read that, if they would. Yeah. So, God says to Adam, Who told you you were naked? And hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Um, two more questions that we see that God posed uh, to Adam. Now, again, does God know? Did God know in this situation um, that who had told them that they were naked? Did God know uh, who it was uh, that they in fact did eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil? So, so what was this question? That why do you suppose God is asking these questions of Adam? Well, we talked a little bit already, right, about his answer. You know, Adam, Adam did not answer correctly when God asked of these questions. Um, but God was wanting him to take accountability for that situation. Um, and unfortunately, Adam did not do what he should have done. You know, when you think that when Adam posed the answer or gave the answer to God of these questions, do you think he was thinking correctly, especially when he, he was accusing God of providing him with someone that made him do this? You know, had he thought that through, do you think he would have answered better than he did? You know, I, I think he, had he thought, put more thought into that, he would have. He would not have blamed Almighty God, Creator, uh, for contributing to his sin. And when God asked this question of Eve, you know, why she had done this, do you think that, that she answered correctly by passing the blame to the serpent? Obviously not. You know, we know that sin is a transgression of, of God's law. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. However, sometimes people look at sin and they think it's no big deal. You know, they, they think it's no big deal to go against God's law. You know, this is... You know, this is a book. This is a book written by men. This isn't. This has no bearing in my life. It's what a lot of people think when, when they think of God's law, and because there there is no um, thought uh, of God and no accountability on their part, often there's deception that is involved. In First John. 1 8 it says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us you know when we say that we have no sin or it's not a big deal that we did this or you know it's it's just a little sin you know it's it's, it's not a major sin it's not like I murdered anyone or you know stole something big it's just a little sin um, we as humans have a tendency to do that, right? It put a, a little less degree on, on, especially if it's our sin or, or our family member's sin, we put a little lesser degree of it than, you know, what we think it should be. But, you know, sin is, is a transgression of God's law. And when we sin, we sin against God. You know, had Adam and Eve thought about what they had actually done, that they had sinned against the almighty God. Maybe they would have had a different attitude as far as being repentant of it and not tried to pass the blame. You know, we, a lot of people in our society do that, don't they, today? They, they look at sin and said, well, I, I was born that way. Or, 
you know, I was, I was in, a, in a, a home, a broken up home, and, and that caused me to, you know, be this way, to steal or, or to be in gangs and, and kill and, uh, or whatever the case may be. It, there's always that, that desire to pass off their actions on other instances, other reasons, other than taking accountability. And we see this with Adam and Eve in, in the very first sin that is recorded, that they weren't willing to take accountability. And if that's one thing that we can get from this lesson is that God expects us to take accountable, accountability for the sins that we commit and, and own up to them. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week uh, when we talk about Eve. Uh, but I want us to think about that. This question, these last two questions that God posed to Adam, um, do you think it would have been beneficial for Adam and Eve to, to recognize who had told them they were naked? That, that it was Satan's schemes and devices that, that kind of created a lie to them that, that they would know like God knows? Had they realized that it was Satan who had brought that deception to him and really realized that Satan is the one that, that was bringing these lies to him, maybe that would have uh, caused them maybe not to sin, uh, but it seems like there, were, there was no, uh, no thought of, of Satan and his schemes that it caused them to, to think that they could be like God. They just had that end desire, that the pleasure of sin, of being you know, like God, uh, overrid that temptation that Satan brought toward them. I think had they given that some thought, that it was Satan who was trying to get them to deviate from what God wanted them to do, that might have changed things. And, uh, you know, that's another point that I think that we can take from these questions, realizing that, that it is Satan that is trying to get us to deviate from what God has commanded us to do. Any thoughts, comments about these questions? think about these questions and, and they are to you know produce thought in us um, these questions are good for for us today you know to think about where are we where is our walk with God you know are, are we where we need to be or do we know why we are where we are those are questions that we can ask ourselves and and realize that if we're not where we need to be, then we need to get there. We need to make sure we're in that situation where we're obedient to God's command and not hiding from him and not trying to retreat or, or get away from the things that, that he has commanded. Any other comments, thoughts before we close?
Good comment. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Thank you all.